Today is a really special day for us here at Gorilla. We have all our composers here in Amsterdam. Our composers come from everywhere around the world, so we don't have that many opportunities to sit together and actually do things face to face. So what we're doing, and this is the second time we're doing this for this project, is we're bringing everyone together. We are uh, going to do a round table. Looking back on, on, on what we did, uh, also what we're going to do still, because we are at this point in time still in the middle of the project. The first people on Horizon Zero Dawn, we, you two got yep. to, we started working together the early on, didn't you? You, you filmed me up. Yeah. I've got this crazy idea. <laughs> no, no, we, we did a session together and we got to know each other and uh, I found out that you were a percussion professional. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, at the beginning of the game, we knew so little about what we were going to do, but we did know that we would have tribes. Yeah. And that's where you came in. Yeah, I did my... You, you called me because I did a, um, a kind of a master in, in world percussion, and you wanted me to explore how the different tribes from Horizon Zero Dawn would sound. Yeah. yeah. When did you get Yoris in? We had the relationship with um, Kill Zones, so I worked in all the Kill Zones, and, and I remember that this new project was, was coming around. And he said, Well, this might not be your thing because you know, you've done the big orchestral stuff for, um, for Kill Zone, and this is quite, you know, we were kind of the opposite of what you've done there. So when I started sort of hearing about what it was about and, and trying to wrap my head around what that was going to sound like sonically, and I did see some of, of Niels's presentation and things, and thinking to myself, He's partially right, this isn't quite my back, but it could be. It's, cool. it's really yeah, challenging, it's, cool. it's really interesting. What's so interesting about it is that juxtaposition of the mechanical and the, and the nature. But I think that's what you wanted, wasn't it? Or to, to get was the, was the, the difference. Obviously, we write very different music than, than Yoris does, and you wanted the two, not polar opposites, but you wanted two, two, two diff voices. very different voices, didn't you? You're all very good at finding that blend, yeah. but in, in your own way, and that's, yeah. that's why it works so well together. Mm. But that's, that's what I liked about how this all worked as well, is the cross-pollination between what we're doing, because you find that what some person is doing sort of feeds into what you might be doing. And I remember that on the first game, it was, you know, two things was like, you guys sort of doing all sorts of weird things to instruments, like bowing and plucking them and kind of thinking, make me sort of go around my studio thinking, what is there I can pick up and pluck and bow and hit and use in different ways that I haven't done before. And you, your work that you did with, with circle percussion as well, yeah. suddenly, you know, we were introduced to these massive drums that became such a big sonic, oh, it became a big part of all hallmark of, yeah, of, of Horizon and sort of then ended up going into everything. You know what I really liked is that from the first announced trailer onwards, that was a piece that was basically, you were all involved in that. Mm. that that's what I like about it, because obviously you wrote the theme and you did, did most of the song, but you were in there with circle percussion. Yeah. And you guys were also and I played in guitar in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you were just on board at that moment yeah. in time. Yeah, that's yeah. already when, when everything started. Yeah. And that was... I remember having like a Skype call with you and, and one of the producers and just saying, well, we've got this trailer coming up. And so, right, well, Tell me, you know, tell me the story, what's, what's happening in this trailer, what's, what's this about? And as you guys started talking, suddenly something happened. And I just had to say, oh, sorry, just, just a second. And like, you literally walked out of I the walked sky out of the sky yeah. meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just quickly ran upstairs and, and sort of, you know, put something down. And that was it. And it was so weird because that's the fastest, quickest thing I've ever done. It's a good done. theme, it's a good and theme it, as well. And it, and it worked. And, and the same with Julie and her involvement was, that was so random it was literally me calling up a mate and saying, I need a vocalist for this. And someone, you know, has got a certain character voice and said, well, I'm just using someone at the moment. Why don't you have them do a demo? And I think it's even the demo that ended up on the, on the track. I remember one of the first things you said to us was you didn't want it to sound like anything else. Which is that impossible. Had been done before. <laughs> Just to say, yeah, and actually, no, and that, that was a that was a, a fun challenge. It was great, mm -hmm. rather than an unfun challenge. It is very difficult to do something you've never heard before yeah. with the instruments 
that we have. And so we came at it as, if, imagine if we lived in that world and we found this instrument, but we didn't know how you played it, what would you do? And you maybe wouldn't pick it up, pick up a, a guitar and play it like a guitar if you'd never seen one before, you'd never seen the historical pictures of it. If you found a box full of harmonicas, what would you do with them? So we did the, the harmonica orchestra, you know, double tracking harmonicas and bow, Boeing um, uh, metal body guitars and, and just looking at things from a Yeah, and we just, and we, and we just um, tried to just uh, manipulate things in a way that we hadn't done before to make them sound different. You can play instruments without completely changing the sound, but you can play them in a different way. Yeah. Right. Can you give an example of that? So we, we did this thing where we were using guitar, a guitar as a kind of more of a percussion instrument. Yeah. So we're keeping the lines very simple, but using, um, setting up a rhythmic delay and, and, and using it as a, as a percussion instrument rather than as a, as a, as a lead. Yeah. One of the key things as well was using a um, volume pedal to take off all the attack off a guitar and then playing chords, but then it sounds like a synth. You can still play the chords that a guitarist can play on a guitar, but you get this, this completely otherworldly kind of sound. I, I think there was kind of an unwritten, or maybe written rule indeed, that if you were going to use strings, then you would have to kind of know for sure that it was the only thing that you could use to achieve the effect. If you, if you could replace a string or layer it up with something else to make it not have that typical yeah, kind yeah. of like big orchestra Hollywood sound. Yeah. And, and I guess that's what you guys also did with that. Yeah, and, and yeah. Yoris was using, you were, you were doing smaller, using smaller sections of strings and, and recording stuff in interesting ways as well. The concept of flutes came up, but there was quite a definite idea of like, oh no, no flutes because they're high and squeaky and we don't really like them. So it was about then looking at like the lowest flute I could find. So I found this guy that played a contrabass flute which is like this amazing contraption of like pipe work that goes up and then into a triangle and and it sounds amazing it's got such a deep voice and it turned out that that was also a really good instrument to do like all these kind of cool breathy effects on these big shifts and stuff that you could put loads of reverb on and then it would just you know go on forever I had a really crappy little file in that actually had a crack in it, so when you bow it, it, it resonates. You did the original Meridian uh, <coughs> City on the Mesa theme yourself on, on violin, didn't you? As yes. A, as a demo. Yes. We should, we should still have that somewhere. No, I think, I thought, <laughs> I, we always thought it sounded really good because it was yeah. really naively yeah, played it was. and it was, it was not the best violin. <laughs> no, no, but it, I mean that in a night. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of naivety in music and. and, and and we played almost everything. We didn't play we? everything yeah. on, on it, and even if we can't, it's a part of our thing as well. Is, mm. is learning to play an instrument over the duration of, duration of a project. So, mm. so we'll go and start, pick something up that looks cool, and then we'll learn to play it. And, and we like the naivety of, of the sound of in, imperfection. So by the time you get to the final cut you're scenes, we're good. really good. Yeah, really <laughs> good. But your, your Neil's um, percussion was was such a huge part part of it as well. And mm. Almost everything, especially having having that an, an original palette of drums that were original for this, this game only um, that you could call on because it, it meant whatever, whatever rhythms and tempos and stuff you got into, it always had a sound of horizon. And it was a fun process as well to uh, get to which drums would work in the game. My challenge in the beginning was more or less just uh, making a new musical history. Mm -hmm. Just researching what kind of tribes are these and why are they making music and then trying to lay that over our own history and seeing what instruments would work there. That Turned out to great. be a unique sound yeah. that, 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 made, uh, yeah, that made it onto Horizon. So then the game launched. We got a lot of people listening to our, our soundtrack. It's fair to say that we were, we were all pretty surprised by how the soundtrack went down. I mean, I think the, the game did even better than you would 
expected as well, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. And the same thing kind of happened with the, with the soundtrack. I mean, I don't, I don't think any of us were really expecting it to get noticed like, like, as much like as it did, yeah. which gave us all quite a different perspective on it moving forward, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And fun fact, we just found out that in 2017, the Horizon Zero Dawn soundtrack was the second most streamed game on Spotify. So we finished up uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and then uh, the Frozen Wilds um, was the next thing we worked on and it's easy I guess to assume that it was just a continuation of what we did before but actually that was a very uh, pivotal project for music, maybe you can... I think it is, was kind of the key, keystone for realizing what we want to do for the Forbidden West. We actually did qu improve quite a lot of things in the Frozen Wilds and one of those things was we have animated like full uh, body mocap um, composition um, scenes in there. And you can't really tell the difference anymore. In, in uh, Zero Dawn, we had static camera set up for conversation. So it was just, you know, one character static in the picture course, yeah. and the other side, you know, just standing there back and forth, kind of like a setup. And in the Frozen Wilds, all of that was mocapped out. Yeah. So um, all of a sudden we had like this issue. Well, we planned for this amount of like cinematics, for example. And then you drop from this cinematic into a conversation that's seamless, right? We didn't have a plan for this. Uh, musically. So, musically. It's really interesting hearing you talk about it, actually, because you really do notice the difference. Yeah. And then, then, then we're now moving into the Forbidden West, and we're, again, you're, 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 you're pushing it even further. A, with the amount of music, because the game is it's much big. bigger. Basically, we, we said, OK, um, we can update the way that music transitions and then and the, the way that music functions a little bit, it will make it better. Or we kind of, our original idea goes off the table and we start over. And that's basically what we started looking into at that point in time. And at first it's kind of like, oh, this is so much work. And you're like, oh, well, this is really cool. And then you get excited. And that's, that's, uh, that influenced basically the music that, that you guys have been writing as well. Yeah. I guess the other important thing is to mention here is that we didn't want to, we have a phrase uh, in Britain where you say you didn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We wanted yeah. to keep what was special about Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn music, I, but, but improve on the, the way it worked interactively. Yeah. We figured out we're actually making a game with a grand story arc, yeah. right? Okay, we have this group of people, um, you know, each uh, person in this group has sort of like a specialty or like, let's say, a, you know, a bunch of specialties yeah. and they complement each other quite nicely. But we also felt like, yeah, the, the part where we really need additional support is like the grand scenes, the storytelling. And actually that was the moment where we brought you into place as well. Yeah.